So my title today is The Levels and Power of Agreement. I know that's an old-fashioned, it's not a clicky kind of subject, but that's what I want to talk about. I want to talk to you about the levels. <laughs> PJ laughs at me because he says, Dad, this is what I'm teaching this week, and he'll give me the subject of it. I said, what does that mean? I mean, what does that really mean? What's the scripture to that? He's like, oh, my God. I said, I know because, you know, I just like simple. T- tell me what you're going to tell me. <laughs> then tell me and tell me what you told me. <laughs> that's good. This next generation, I get y'all, but I am who I am. So the little ninja jabs, zip, zip, uh, yeah, hey, uh, just, this is what I'm thinking to tell you. I'm thinking to talk to you about what? The, yeah, the, the levels and the power of agreement. Now, so let's talk about agreement first. Let's talk about what, when we talk about agreement, and I'm going to use uh, the scripture that uh, God gave uh, PJ earlier, right? When we talk about agreement, Agreement is the harmony in a typical legal binding arrangement between different parties as a mutual desired course of action. So agreement is when at least one person or two people come together and they decide contractually that they have a certain outcome they want and they want to walk toward that outcome. So a marriage is an agreement, right? There are business agreements. There are friend agreements. There, but the only how can two Amos three three how can two walk together unless they agree? So you want a woman you can agree with. You don't want an arguing woman all the time and fussing, or a man either. Yeah. So. Um, Because you can't walk together unless there's a contract that's signed about an outcome you both agree on. So you don't want friendships that are nebulous. You need to know what are your points of agreement. What are our goals, our KPIs? What are are our key points of emphasis? What are our expectations? Because if we don't know what the expectations are, we can't walk together to get there. So when we talk about, when I talk about agreement today, I'm talking about somebody who comes together and agrees with something or somebody else about something amazing happening in their life. We still together? So let me say this about agreements. This is what agreements do. And this is why you need to learn how to make agreements and keep your covenants. Let other people walk away from covenant, but don't you walk away from covenant. Don't walk away from stuff and it's still alive. It wasn't settled. Settle it. Don't walk walk on with your life. You get what I'm saying? If you know the kid in the third grade stole your bike, find her now. Call her in New York and say, I know you. I know you was the one that stole my bike and I'm moving on with my life. Yeah, you got to settle all these contracts A good lawyer will tell you, a good doctor will tell you, a good professional counselor will tell you. They will take you back to your past and make you heal what happened, right? So in this same way, if there are any contracts you made, if you told the girl you were going to marry her and you didn't, well, now you got, a, you got a, the wife you married, right? You need to settle. Now, talk to your wife first. You, she, might, she might say, don't call her. We need to settle this. How do you say it without the, with, we don't need to go there. We can do this virtually. <laughs> this is all I'm saying. Sometimes what's holding you up in your life is not the devil. It is the contract you made. It was an agreement you made, a promise you made. And now that little promise hinders you. Are y'all too young to listen to an old guy? If if you you have to settle these. And as the Holy Spirit brings them up. So here's what an agreement does. Because agreements multiply the capacity of an endeavor and it strengthens the outcome, the outcome's possibilities. In other words, I can get more done in my life if I pick the right ways and the right people to agree with. If one can put a thousand to flight and two that agree can put 10,000 to flight, do the math for me. What happens when four people agree? 
know, mathematicians, what happens when four people agree using that math? I don't know either, so don't expect me to give you the number. <laughs> math wasn't my thing. If one puts 1,000, two puts 10,000 to flight, four people. How many people in your family? You, your wife, your four, your dad, your mom, your sisters, cousins, nieces. Some of you got families of 30 people, and we're still trying to find one in the family to become a millionaire. All y'all need to get together and agree. All you need to do is get together and agree. You don't have to like everybody in your family. You don't, look, you don't have to like them. You just need to find one point to agree. I hate you, Aunt Gussie, but we all going to be millionaires. See, that's enough. (laughs) The power of agreement has levels. And at each level, you get more and more stuff. Y'all okay with the kingdom? So now, here is what, here's what we have to understand. That truly, and I'll show you, but I'm going to tell you now, I'm going to show it to you again later. Really, the key to the kingdom is can we agree? Can you agree with Genesis 1? Can we agree with Genesis 1? How many people can we get together to agree on Genesis 1? Depending on how many people we can get together that agree on Genesis 1, will be the outcome for all of us. You don't get healed from breast cancer by yourself. It's too big for just you. It's too big of a stronghold for you. It's too... You have to be in a culture to become very wealthy. It's hard to do that by yourself. Well, I don't like y'all sing at that church. Forget that. Do you want to be rich? I don't speak in tongues. Skip that. Put earplugs in your ear. I don't believe in speaking in tongues. But as soon as we stop speaking in tongues, you need to be listening because people around this church are not ashamed about wanting to be wealthy. We ain't trying to run from it. Well, I don't believe in wealth. Close your ears when we talk about it. Because being poor? Matthew 16. Matthew 16, 18, it says, and I, listen, and I also say to you that what? You, you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades, or hell, shall not prevail against it. Read verse 19 out loud, everybody. This is that time I want you to learn, so you got to talk to yourself. Read it out loud. And I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you bind on earth, will be bound in heaven. Come on. And whatever... On earth will be in Write down this next point about what a key is. In this scripture, this is the definition of a key. If I gave you the key to my house, what have I just given you? Access. If I give you the key to my car, what have I given you? Access. I've given you access. And today, these cars won't work unless the key is present. The key will call the police. Right? So the key is the access to power and authority is through your ability and opportunity to obtain knowledge. The real key, the real key, the real key to your life is the opportunity and the ability to be in the right places to get the right information. Because once you have the right information, there is no devil. He's the God of the air. He's the God of the media. He's the God of the ignorance. He's the, he's the God of what keeps you out of things. Knowledge brings you in. And don't worry nothing about people who think they can control you by what they do in public school. You were never supposed to... Okay. The public school was never supposed to be your first place of learning. Church was. And the church was supposed to support your parents who was trying to teach you at home. So we're not concerned about, we'll have our own school. We'll make our houses our schools. Our families our schools. You got educators in here 
that are so anointed and other nonprofit workers who work in education, they are so anointed to do what they do. So tell your neighbor, we're going to be fine. So now, this is what I want you to know. You got, you got the definition of a key? I'm going to read this one scripture, then I'll move on. It's Luke 11. I'm not going to read it. You're going to read it. Luke 11, 52. Luke eleven fifty two, 52. You ready? Yeah. All right. The word lawyer here doesn't mean, doesn't mean esquires or people who pass the bar. The word lawyer in this scripture means scribes and Pharisees who control the law of the church. Y'all with me? Yeah. Let's read it together. Woe to you lawyers, for you have taken away the key. Read that again. Woe to you lawyers, for you have taken away. What did they say? What did they take away? So what is the key? Knowledge is the key. What did I say? Look at your hand. Talk to your hand. Tell your hand. Listen, hand. Knowledge is the key. That was just quicker than getting you to take a selfie. Look at yourself in the mirror every day and remind yourself, it is what I don't know. Martin, it's what you don't know that has you in this predicament. So Martin, if you want to get rid of the devil in your life, you don't fast and pray. You don't rebuke him. You'll not find it in the Bible. Oh, I'm sorry. Find it for me. I rebuke you. No. You'll find one scripture that says Satan the Lord rebukes you. Stop wasting your time with the devil. If you want him to leave your life, pick up a book. Get on TikTok, Instagram, Google. Get on something and ask a question. Shoot. AI. Ask AI. AI will tell you. The devil will leave you alone. That's why there are certain parties, and I believe it's all of them, who want to keep you as dumb as stupid. Take off both shirts. Whatever shirt you wear. (laughs) Neither one of those political parties are for you. He says, you got to read the last part. You've taken away the key of knowledge. The last part is the worst. Read the last part. You did not enter yourselves, and those who were entering in. So the Pharisees know what the kingdom is. The religious people in your life know what the kingdom is. They know how it functions. They know what the key is. They know that knowledge encouraging you to be educated in who you are, who God is, what he wants for you, they skip that. They take that out of their sermons because we want control over you. And the more stupid you get God's people, the more advantage you can take over them. Look at your neighbor and say, we ain't having that around here though. No, we ain't trying to do all that. 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 How many of y'all, I won't look, how many of y'all tired of stupid? How many of y'all tired of ignorance? You're tired of ignorance in yourself. Would you jump on your feet? You're the brave ones. I'm tired of ignorance in myself. Tell yourself, that's just too much I don't know. I need to know some stuff. I need to know some stuff about me. I'm, I'm talking to me and I'm asking you to talk to you. I need to know some stuff about me. I need to know some real stuff. I can't hear y'all for nothing. Before you sit down, look at your neighbor and say, I'm cool with you. But I got to figure out how to be cool with me. I got I to gotta figure that thing out. I got to figure out how to love me. I got to figure out how to be in love with myself, my dreams, 
my heart, my calling. I got to find a way to get in love with me, my brain, how I see the world. Because when I'm cool with me, I can be cool with you. The reason I don't like you is because I don't even know who I am. Okay, sit down. Lord Jesus, 25 minutes. Ain't the Lord all right. So watch this. Let me go back up to that verse. That, that verse that says, and I want to go to verse 19. And I will give you the keys. I'm going to give you access of the kingdom, not to it. I'm going to give you access of this kingdom. So whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven and whatever you loose on earth let me tell you what that means the words will be the words will be in the Greek literally mean I am and exist so when he says whatever you bind on earth I hear it preached all the time and I'm not here preacher bashing I hear it preached all the time that whatever I loose, God will loose it in heaven. That's not what it means. I'm not in control of God. I can't make him bind something he didn't bind. Okay, bind means what? Bind means allowed. Bound. Bound means to keep. Bound means to restrict. Bound means to tie up. Bound means to put it in jail. What does loose mean? Let go. Give it access. Allow it to happen. So God says now, whatever you determine on earth that's illegal needs to be put in jail. People say whatever you decide needs to be put in jail, God going to put it in jail. Well, what if you want to put your mother-in-law in jail? I bind you in Jesus' name. God ain't your guido. He's not your muscle. He's not going to hate people you hate. He's not going to cooperate with your jealousies. He ain't going to kill your ex-husband. God still got a plan for the dude. Now, he might need somebody to beat the hell out of him, but... <laughs> Okay, let me get back. <laughs> I'm public speaking now, so some words might come out that... The, 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 word, the, the words, those words mean simply this. I am and exist. In other words, the words will be means it already is. Whatever you bind will be, so whatever you bind has been bound. Whatever you loose has already been loosed. Here's the problem. The other part of the word is will be. So the first part of that word is it has been. The second part of the Greek word means it will be. In other words, God says whatever you bind has to already be bound in heaven. It's already bound. It exists. It is. I am. That's heaven, though. If you want it bound here, you're going to have to bind it. If poverty or depression or whatever it is in your life is in your life, it's only in your life because God has already bound it in heaven, but you haven't bound it here. So God says, whatever you find out has been, will be, when you do it. I'm, I'm too, I'm, that's too much. Am I making sense? I ain't making sense. If Farah, if, 
If, if God wants me to be wealthy, have a wife and children, you get what I'm saying? The only thing standing in my way is me in my ignorance. Because I don't know that. And I'll spend my life being mad at women or men. And I won't just loose it. I'm not making sense. I loose my wife. I loose my children. I loose the millions that are supposed to be in my hands. I bind poverty. I bind the ignorance that make people impoverished. So now God says, oh, you figured out what I have for you. And now you have bound it. So now I can bind what's keeping you out of it on earth. Say heaven. Heaven. Then say earth. Earth. Heaven. Heaven. Earth. Earth. Use your finger. Heaven. Heaven. Earth. Earth. Come on. Heaven. Heaven. Earth. John Travolta. (laughs) Heaven doesn't come to earth unless you allow it. Until you agree with heaven. My sister came to me once. My sister came to me once, uh, high school. I was in college, but she told me about a guy that she, was, that she liked and he had broke up with her. He, he broke it up with her and this just crushed her because, you know, we didn't do a bunch of boyfriends and all that stuff in our family. It just crushed her. And I'm away in college. I come home. I'm only going to be there for a little bit because, you know, you got to work when you're in college. She told me about him and I was totally fine with what he said. But when she told me what she said, I said, now, we got to stop right there. You can't say those words about yourself. I'll beat you up. You talk about yourself like that. I know y'all think, you going to beat your sister up? Yeah, y'all know y'all fight with y'all sister, brother. I said, I'm going to spank you myself. I don't care what he said. Because his words don't mean, I mean, you know, uh, His words don't mean anything. But when I said to her, when you say it, every man from now on is going to see you in your words. Tell your neighbor, I'll slap you if I hear you saying something bad about yourself. I tell them straight up in the mouth. Intercessors, y'all praying, right? Don't y'all slap nobody in here. There are people around. (laughs) You can't allow people to say things about themselves that aren't true, aren't God, right? Sometimes you have to bind your own mouth. You have to bind your own thinking. You've got to bind your own words. Because when people bring you into court, they think you're coming to defend yourself against the charges. You are not. You're in court to represent yourself, regardless of what the charges are. Read Job 33. Job wasn't in there because of what he did. When he got into the courts of heaven, he just simply told his friends, this is who I was before all that happened. This is who I am now. So he said, come here, let me spit on you and pray for you. This is what I do. He anointed them and prayed for them. That's what got him out of court. I got you lost. Tell your neighbor, tell yourself, bind it. it. Tell yourself, loose it. it. When you loose what God has for you, because you'll never get my only point that I might get to today. Until you understand this, we're going to be left behind in everything. Tell your neighbor there are levels to this. I got four I was going to give you today, but I'm going to make it through one. Because the key to the kingdom is agreement. Whatever you loose, when it's loosed in heaven, you loose it on earth. You give it permission. So if there are things happening in your life you don't want to happen, if you can find it in the word that God doesn't want to happen to you, You bind it. 
And then you step back and watch God, the angels, circumstance, and people. And the guy was telling this the other day. He said, I was, we, were, we were agreeing on this point. Whatever, 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 whatever uh, God, I was saying God, this person was saying uh, another word for God, and they expected me because I was a, a Christian or a kingdom citizen, and, and the other day we, we got also, also were able to sit down with, with Jehovah's Witnesses, and uh, these arguments come up, and I cut them real short, cut them real short. Well, what God are you praying to? What's his name? Is it Yahweh? Is it Allah? Is it Whatever. I said, look, can we agree on one thing? Can we agree there's only one God? I don't care what you call her. I don't care what color they are. I don't care what language you call their name. There's only one creator. Let's just agree on that and let's move on. So when you say Allah is good, I say Elohim is good. Same God. We get different because we can't agree. You don't have time to be in disagreement. Especially when you're in somewhere where you want something big to happen. You can't be sitting up, you can't be sitting up in law school and studying law and fussing with everybody around the room because got their quivy little, their little differences. They don't like your hair. I don't care if you don't like my hair. You're not going to be the man playing in my hair. No way. Okay, I'm sorry. Y'all, y'all, tell your neighbor, some stuff just shouldn't, shouldn't matter. It should not matter to you. It's petty. It's small. It ain't got nothing to do with nothing. So, so here it is. Here's the first level. First level. <laughs> Lord have mercy. Say, me, me. Myself, myself, and I. It's the first level of agreement. Now, what I'm getting ready to say might shock you. But the first level of agreement is you. Here's why. When I can find a way to agree with myself, I create an atmosphere. I'm going to talk to you about this in a minute because I know you're looking for, where's God in this? He ain't in this. The first level ain't got nothing to do with God. <laughs> Poke your neighbor and tell him to keep breathing now. He's not in heresy. It's going it's to be okay. It's going to be okay. <laughs> when I hear something in my spirit, when an idea comes to my mind and it will not leave me, Lenny, it won't leave me. It won't leave me. You see, you, you, I mean, you see a girl at nine years old with ponytails and them bobby socks on with them patent leather shoes and you're praying for her all your life, but you're dating other girls, not sleeping with them. You're dating other girls, but this girl won't, she just won't leave your mind. She, she won't leave your mind. An idea won't leave your mind. Walt Disney saw Disney in a swamp. Alligators, snakes, water. It wasn't even buildable. But he saw it. Budsy Siegel saw a place in the United States where he could gamble and kill people and hire the governor. He gonna buy, he gonna hire the governor the police department, he going to pay everybody. He going to rewrite the laws. And if you want to practice law there, you got to go to law school in Vegas. Because we in the United States, but he saw something in the middle of a desert, rattlesnakes, sand, no water. Shoot, this guy got so big that he got the government to dam up the river to bring him water. But he just had an idea. There was nothing there. You got to learn to pay attention to those little hunches, those little bitty things that's inside your head and you, you try to drink them out. 
try to sex them out. You try to drown these little ideas, but nothing happens big until something happens little inside you. We trust everybody except ourselves. If I'm boring you, I'm fine. But if I'm making sense to you, get up from your seat and get as close as you can to this altar. Find a seat as close. I want to know who I'm talking to. I want to know who I'm talking to. Because I know I didn't know I don't come to the altar. I said, find a seat. If you don't learn how, listen to me good now. If you don't learn how to pay attention to the collard green green farts, those moments in your life when you just go, what was that? That makes absolutely no sense. But here's why it doesn't, and we tried hard to teach our kids this. If you can figure out who you are and begin to just trust yourself, it might look like risks to other people, but to you, you're just creating an atmosphere. You're just obeying the voice that's in your head. Because when the Bible says, oh, hold on now. When the Bible says, if two of you shall agree, it ain't talking about you find somebody to agree with you. You think you need another human being. I agree with you. No. Oh, okay. Okay. That's why people aren't helping you. Because you think you need them. You do not need me to agree with a destiny God told you you could have. You don't need nobody. Tell yourself. Self, Self. you don't need nobody. nobody. Okay, because the word you here means it's singular and plural. So depending upon what I want to get done in my life, Daniel, it don't matter what's happening around me. It matters what's happening If I have a destiny, I just need two of me to agree. My spirit, my soul, or my body. If I can get my spirit and my soul to agree, my body will just walk it out. Now, I can't get my spirit, my soul, and my body to agree when I want to do something big with Linnell. You can't influence Vanessa like that. She's a full moral agent. My wife is who she is. So that's why when I proposed to her, I told her what God's going to do with me. I said, I don't need you to do nothing. I just need you to I told her that night, I said, now, I asked your dad to talk to you, but your dad said I had to ask you. So I got two children. I named my children. I named my children. I told her how much money I was going to be worth. Wasn't worth a dime at the time. I told her what my destiny was. So all I need you to do is agree. Why? Because that's second level stuff. That's stuff I cannot do. Alone. So let me go back. Me, myself, and I. If I can agree with myself, you might sound schizophrenic for just a moment. 
but talk to yourself. And you tell yourself, now listen, self, listen, listen to me. You better listen to me. You better listen to me, self. You better listen to me. I said, talk to yourself out loud. You better listen to me. One of the three of y'all is going to agree because I'm tired as all get out of being here. I'm tired of being stuck here. I'm not going to be here no more longer. I got to figure this out. And tell yourself, you the one that's keeping me out. It ain't her. It ain't D-E-M. It ain't them. D-A-Y, they ain't got nothing to do with this. I'm the ignorant one keeping my own booty out of what God assigned for me. Now, when the two of you agree, oh God, Josh, help me out, Lenny. When the two of me agree, Martin, his soul and his spirit agree, God says, I'm going to be there with you. Y'all don't even understand what I'm saying. God don't show up till you agree. He ain't coming. He ain't coming to hang out with you. He ain't coming to hang out with your sad self. He ain't coming to hang out with you cursing. He, I'm, talking about, I'm, not talking, I'm not talking about profanity. I'm talking about saying stuff about yourself that God, you say, I'm not worth nothing. God's like, oh, but I made you. What you talking about? He ain't coming. He ain't coming till you agree. But when you agree, God says, I'm in the midst of them. If I just set you free, if I just set you free, 60 seconds of crazy, stupid praise that embarrasses the people around you. Go. Come on. Come on. Come on. Look at your neighbor. Look at your neighbor. Look at your neighbor and say, I love you. I respect you. But I don't need you. I ain't got to have you. If God said something about me, I don't need my wife to agree. I don't need my husband to agree. I don't need my employer to agree. I don't need nobody to agree. Say it. I agree. God, you got something for me, and I agree with myself. I got two minutes. I got two minutes. I got two minutes. Watch this now. Stand up. Don't, 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 don't sit down. Watch this now. Watch this now. Watch this now. He says, me, myself, and I, one. Listen to Deuteronomy 6 and 4. It says, hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Watch him now. The Lord is unified. God agrees with himself. He doesn't need you or me to agree with him. If it's his will, it's going to happen. Y'all still with me? Let me shock you with the scripture you never read. It's coming. So now, uh, John 10 and 30, it says, I, oh, put it on the screen. Put on the screen and tighten up your jock strap, pin that weave on your head. Because this is the stuff they don't want you to read. They don't want you to know this, Jasmine. They don't want you to know. But I'm going to tell you. I'm going to tell you. I'm just going to read it to you out of your Bible. Read it. This is what Jesus said. Read what he said. I. Read it like you're in second grade together. I. Look at yourself. Talk to yourself again. Say. Okay. So now let's get drunk. Let's get drunk on 1 John 4 and 17. Yeah. It's going to mess you up. Hey. Go mess you up. Read it loud. Love has been perfected. We're not looking for love to be perfected. You don't need to come to church to have your love perfected. God's already perfected your love. You just need to loose it. Read it. Among us in this, that we may. Why? Why 
watch him now. He's saying, if Jesus could say, me and my father are one. I am Jesus in this world. So whatever he said, I can say. Me and my father are one. That's how I do it in the mirror. <laughs> try it, try it, try it one time. Fold your arms. Get a stinky look on your face. Say it like Yule Brenner in the Prince of Egypt. Me and my father are one. When you see me, you have seen my father. Whatever my father does, that is what I do. You know, I want to live in Africa. You know, I want to live in Africa. That is what my father do. Me and my father are one. So I say, I do not need you. Me, connected to my father, every dream God has for me, every calling, God has for me every place I'm supposed to go everything I'm supposed to have everything I'm supposed to do I have it now my time is up I mean, if, if, that's, if that's you, now it's time to come to the altar. And don't walk up here with your head bowed down. Don't walk up here, Lord, I just need you to do something in my life. No, you do something in your life. Make a decision. Decide that God has called you. Decide that God has something for you. Me and my father are one. What I say, what I bind, what I loose is, I said talk. Whatever I loose shall be loosed. So go ahead and loose some stuff. Open your mouth, open your mouth, open your mouth, open your mouth. Loose your prosperity, loose your health, loose your wealth, loose your relationships. Loose your perfect expression in the world. Loose the job. Loose the business. Loose your womb to have children. Loose yourself to get married. Forget everything else. Loose it. 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 Somebody get serious about this. Loose it. Don't just stand there. Loose it. Forget your sin. Forget what you think you did wrong. Your father doesn't really care about that. He has Jesus who sets you free. Loose what is yours. If you don't know what it is, pray in the Holy Ghost. If you don't know what it is, pray in the Holy Ghost. If you're not baptized in the Holy Ghost, be baptized in the Holy Spirit now. Loose it. Loose it. Loose it. I loose my prosperity. I loose I loosen my mind a good spirit. I loose, I loose myself from depression. I loose myself from poverty. Y'all hear? Now bind some things. What needs to be illegal in your life? What needs to be illegal in your life? What needs to be deemed illegal in your life? What needs to be deemed illegal in your life what needs to be illegal in your life bind it bind it bind it bind it say it's illegal 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 this is illegal in my life you can't have my kids like this 
This is illegal in my life. You can't have my destiny like this. This is illegal in my life. I deem you illegal. Bless you. Bless you. Come on, that's illegal. What's illegal? It has to stop now. Talk to it. Open your mouth and talk to it. Don't think about it. Talk to it. Bind it. Don't talk to the devil. The devil has nothing to do with this. He has nothing to do with this. He has nothing to do with this. Just bind it. I, I tell you, you're illegal. Cancer, you're illegal in my body. Sickness, high blood pressure, any disease, you're illegal in my body. The roadblocks that are in front of me for my destiny, you're illegal in my life. I bind you. I bind you. And talk to yourself. If you're bold enough, say, in the next seven days. Come on, talk to yourself. Come on, talk to yourself. In the next seven days, I'm going to see the evidence that you are bound. In the next seven days, I'm going to see that this thing is loosed in my life. I'm going to see the evidence of open doors. I'm going to see the evidence of relationships. I'm going to see the evidence. Come on, talk to it. I'm going to see the evidence. You can't take my words for it. You've got to talk to yourself. you got to tell yourself. In the middle of your mental disease, you've got to talk to yourself. In the middle of your pain, you've got to talk to yourself. In the middle of your disappointment, you've got to talk to yourself. I'm not having it no more. I'm not having it no more. I bind you in Jesus' name. I loose you in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. 